Hey everyone, welcome to episode four of Joan and Claire, feminist activist sisters from Uganda. Today we're going to be talking about schools and schooling. Hi, how are you doing? Oh, yeah, good. Um, so, yeah, I know that from a previous chat, I think one of you, I can't remember whether it's Joan or Claire, went to a mixed school and then one of you went to a same sex school. Is that is that correct? Yes, yes. I went to a same sex school. Okay. okay, so Joan went to the mixed. So could you explain why? Is there any reason why you went to different kinds of schools? Is it to, why did your parent is it what your parents suggested or um, is it just well, chance or? It was not chance. For me, I thought I would be more comfortable there. It's me who chose that. Yeah, I also chose mine because I felt like it's what I wanted. Yeah. Okay, fine. That's great. So you, you got what you, you, you both chose to be in those situations. Well, that's great. Um, it sounds like your parents. Uh, um, uh it sounds like they they wanted to help you you know achieve what you would you say your parents are very are good at sort of facilitating what what you want and get and giving you a lot of choice well they have been in the past when you were younger yeah yeah they have been that's great that's great so yeah um maybe Joan, first of all, like in your experience in the mixed school, um, how did you find that boys treated girls? Was that it was there a kind of because you said something before about the head prefects or, and things like that could couldn't be girls, or it was very difficult for a girl to be like the head prefect and things things like that. So was there a culture in the school where boys were treated better than girls in some ways? well um the the school was nice and it seemed like everything was equal up to when it came to politics yeah leading the school like um they had been like like 10 years in a row where boys were leading i experienced this so one time a girl won elections and everyone was like how can a girl win the boys are supposed to be the head prefect yeah but then we fought, we did everything, and then the girl became the head prefect. But also um, in class, the class prefect, the head of the class, it's like a must. The class monitor is supposed to be a boy, and then um, the assistant is supposed to be a girl. Yeah. Even in my primary school, I was in a mix, but oh, okay. always would be the head boy, the boy would be the class monitor, and the girl was always maybe the assistant. Like oh, no. girls were given those posts. Yeah, and boys yes. were in charge of like the the school systems, the dining halls, all the nice places in the school, like boys ruin the boys' teachers. Okay, they fight for boys, they be like, let the boys be when you try to complain what they'll be like, ah, oh, just go to sleep, everything like that, watching movies, what entertainment, boys would be leading everything. Okay. But then it was normal in the school setting, but then it was a serious injustice. Yeah, yeah, it is a serious injustice. And so, and so then I guess the boys end up being very arrogant and they think they can do anything they want and, and, yeah. and just look down on you all the time. And, um, yeah, exactly. what, what about the, um, uh, um, Claire, what about your experience in, in the same sex secondary school? Was that, was that, did you feel like, like it was safer? for you to, to be in the same sex or? I feel mine was better, like there was freedom of expression. You express yourself freely, like there are some things you do not fear, like, you know, in mixed schools that I had friends there, they keep telling you some girls don't even eat enough, like the fear of boys maybe talking about you, this girl eats. But yeah. then first would be free. You can get any amount of food you want. You can do anything you want in class. Maybe you can, anything that you'd want to do, maybe even in school compound, but these guys were so restricted. 
and then even our like we would have matrons like matrons in charge of us in the dorm area they were so free with us but then when this i have friends in me even joan would tell me about her matrons like they were so strict on girls but then boys they would give them all their freedom which for us you don't see like all of us were given the same treatment sure yeah that's really interesting what you said about just on a very basic level that 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 you felt more free to express yourselves in an all, all female environment just surrounded by other girls you felt more able to just to express yourself that that's a really important basic uh thing that that we should all have you know everyone so that's really interesting um so so what about um the teachers like for instance starting off at the primary school level the lower level the primary school level are are there equal amounts of female and male teachers or is it more female teachers or more male teachers no there are more male teachers really like it was rare to even find female teachers like even in my single sex school people would think that maybe you're going to have only maybe female teachers but it was mostly male teachers really? the females are rare Really? Yeah, and the females are given uh, and, and and we are the most female teachers. We're teaching these that babies that they give them like guidance and counseling, the easy subjects, those easy ones, yeah. or CRE, and they hire the male ones to teach the like hard subjects, mathematics, chemistry, physics. biology. Yeah. Oh no. So, because in in the UK, at the primary school level, the lower level, there's I think there's it's quite equal or there might even be more female teachers than male i don't know but um so yeah i was that that is slightly you know surprising and and a bit a bit shocking to me i guess that that um so so i guess it's part of the whole system um the whole school system in uganda at, at the moment that women are still viewed a lot like as a, as if they can't be as intelligent as men and can't teach as well as men and um, exactly yeah so i'm really sorry to hear that how about um university to do i mean how how common is it you know out of the classes that you were in in secondary school how common is it for anyone to go on and study at university level is that very rare and is it more boring? i don't know it's 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 rare and that's why but me i've already joined campus like i've i've finished my first year joan has not yet really going there but in my class i'm studying a bachelor's of veterinary medicine oh great and and we are like we are nine girls in the whole class the whole semester the whole year we are nine girls and then the total boys the boys are literally like 50 something so you you don't do that personal space you don't like at first there was not really like even fear the class you wonder why are there less girls we are not even near to half the number of boys the boys are so many and then you could you can experience at so many harassment like maybe like the boys you know how boys be they are so rowdy and then you're in class maybe if you wear something short they can over speak about it but i feel like someone should have freedom of what to wear but yeah, yeah. those are the problems that when we are few girls like we are really few the yeah. that, that's what the thinking is about that maybe those science courses yeah okay that's interesting uh, yeah so claire were, were you saying so you did you say you were studying veter veterinary medicine Yes, and the girls are so few. We are nine something, and you can already feel the oppression. You come in class, we are really few, and then the questions, why are there a few girls? And then that's where all the whole point comes about this thing. They say maybe girls do not do this. They say girls, most girls that do not do those hard science courses, that that mindset, and most girls already go with it from childhood. A girl grows up and is like, 
me I'm a girl I cannot study medicine courses maybe I cannot do engineering so when you go to such classes you find very few girls we are very few and generally the whole college now people who are like in the final year they only like the way I think five girls in the whole class so it is a general issue at in such courses girls are very few sure sure and and um Joan do you uh, are you studying at university or do you have plans to or or is that not your path I'm I'm not I'm not yet in university, but I'm joining this year. I'm waiting. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. Yeah. Okay. And do you do you know what you want to study yet? Yeah. What do you want to study? Industrial art. Sorry, say I didn't hear that. Say that again. Industrial art and design. Um, oh, and okay. Yeah. That's, that's fascinating. Amazing. Great. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think we've we've had a good introduction to the issues that girls and young women face in in education in Uganda. Um, you know that that's a nice short section. Um, I'm sure the audience found that really fascinating. I know I did, and maybe we can return to this subject another time in a later episode and go more in depth into some particular aspect. But for now, is there anything that either of you um, would like to say anything more about um, the education system in Uganda and, and how girls and boys are treated differently? Is there anything else you want to say? Don't worry if there's nothing you want to say, but well, we just want a change in the system. We just want more equality. The facilities for boys should be the same facilities for girls, and everyone should be entitled to, um, to standing up for any position that they want. Yeah. And also, girls cutting hair is too much. Like it, um, it's bad. It just demoralizes. Like. It's like all oh, girls are supposed to cut. You know, there's a reasonable cutting where you can leave a reasonable size of your hair, but they're supposed to cut bold. And with this climate change, there's a lot of sunshine. It really affects us. I'm but traumatized. They don't know it's, yeah, make someone lose confidence. Sometimes you miss out on lunch because you know people are going to look at you with your bald head and everyone will be staring and talking. It's really demoralizing, traumatizing, and makes someone lose confidence. Yeah, and also maybe in empowering and encouraging more girls that all of us can do any course you want. Anyone can study those yeah. big courses. They are not only for boys. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, I totally agree with you, and I wish you all the luck in the world for uh, promoting and, and empowering girls, um, in, including in the context of schools. Um, so yeah, um, thanks so much for joining me again. Joan and Claire, and um, I'll see you next time. Yeah. See you too. See you. Okay. Bye. Bye bye.